In this task, we'll explore the use of a buffer operation and a select by location operation to determine the parcels affected by a tornado. So buffering is a key vector analysis tool in a GIS. It gives us the ability to create a new GIS layer representing a buffer distance from some map feature. So here I have QGIS desktop open. The parcels are in yellow, the schools are in green, and the path of the tornado is the red line. And to identify the area impacted by the tornado, I'll create a 900 meter buffer around the path. So I'm going to use the buffer tool, which is found under the vector menu, under geoprocessing tools, buffers. So the layer I want to buffer is the tornado path, so that'll be the input vector layer. The buffer distance is going to be 900. And this operation is going to generate a new shapefile. So I'm going to browse to the lab data. into the lab3 data folder. And I'll call this tornado buffer. There's another optional input, segments to approximate. QGIS can't create true curves, but it provides an option to set segments to approximate. The higher this number, the smoother the output will be because QGIS will use more segments to approximate the curve. For this task, I'm just going to leave it at 5, but I wanted to explain that input to you. So that's all I have to do. I have the input layer, the buffer distance, and the output layer. And I'll click OK. And the buffer is added to the map. So this is a new polygon layer created that covers the land 900 meters from the tornado's path. I'm going to click Close to close this. And now I'm going to make the new layer semi-transparent so I can see what parcels, schools, and roads were affected. So I'm going to double click on the tornado buffer layer, go to the Style tab, then I'm going to use this transparency slider, set it to about 50%, and click OK. So now I can see the layers underneath it. Looking at the result, we can immediately see the areas affected by the tornado. So this is a prime example of how buffers are used. Now I'll determine exactly which parcels were affected. So I'll need to identify which parcels overlapped with the tornado buffer. To do this, I'm going to use the Select by Location tool. In the previous task, you learned how to select by attributes. Here we're going to be selecting by location. So I'm going to go to the Vector Research Tools, Select by Location. So again, this tool is going to let me select parcels that overlap with that tornado buffer layer. So I want to select features in the parcels layer that intersect features in the tornado buffer. I'm going to create a new selection, and I'll click OK. I'll click Close. So the parcels that intersect the tornado buffer are now selected, but the default yellow selection color is very close to the yellow color we're using for the parcel, so it's hard to see. So I'm going to change that selection color. And I can do that by going to the Project menu and opening up Project Properties. If we go to the General tab, you'll see this option for the selection color. I'm just going to click the drop down, and I'm just going to make this a blue, a bright blue, and click OK. So now those selected parcel polygons are that nice teal blue that's easy to see. From here I could save out the selected parcels as a new shapefile. To do this I would simply right click on the parcels layer and choose Save As. And I would export the layer but I would save only selected features. I would check that box. I'm not going to do that for this task but sometimes you will use selections just to create a new subset of a layer. Finally I'm going to examine the total value of these affected parcels. To do this, I'll use the Basic Statistics tool. And this is found under the Vector menu, under Analysis Tools, Basic Statistics. So I'll open up this window. The input vector layer is going to be the parcels. And I'm going to make sure this box is checked to use only the selected features. And the target field is going to be Total Value. And I'll click OK. Expand this. And so now you can see that we have basic statistics on just the selected set of these parcels. So the sum is what I'm interested in. This would be the total value of those selected parcels. It's the great example of how you can generate information from GIS data. So in this lab you explored the use of data dictionaries with coded field names. You experienced another example of using attribute table queries. And in this task you used a buffer operation combined with the select by location operation and basic statistics to determine the total value of parcels impacted by a tornado. 
In the next lab, you'll learn about vector overlay techniques.